So Jürgen, how's, uh, how's life treating you uh, these days? Pretty good. Nothing to moan about, to be honest, no. All good um, and fully charged. Yeah, fully yeah. charged already? Yeah, it's eight, what is it, eight, nine weeks or so? Yeah. Yeah, it's enough. It's not, I didn't, I didn't say it's, um, um, I can go again. It's just, of course, I'm, I'm completely, um, uh, how can I say, I'm in a good mood. Yeah. Why? Life is different. If you are not responsible for all these kind of things. And um, so I really enjoy that. Uh, I enjoy still watching football, and especially, especially uh, Salzburg right now, because um, Pep is super important to me, was and is still. And so I like watching it and like to see the progress. And yeah, saw Liverpool playing as well, it was really good. So, um, yeah, these are the, the things I watched. But besides that, it was a lot of Olympics and stuff like that. So, brilliant summer so far. Yeah, you yeah. said uh, during your goodbye at Anfield, I want to do so many things. What things make you happy now? Sport. Um, I didn't have time really uh, over the years. Maybe I could have, but it was just uh, the mind was not there to do it really. So we do a lot of sports. So not only paddle, it's fitness as well. So just um, doing things you, you want to do in the moment you want to do it, these kind of things. So a lot of family, friends, met more friends in the last four weeks than I met probably in the last 20 years before. <laughs> um, but you have to organize um, the time off as well, because it's not, um, you, a lot of people want to meet you and stuff like that. And all of that, oh my God, that's really stressful. Hey, he wants to meet me, she, for everybody. So we had to calm down a little bit, but we are fine. We spent now three proper weeks with the grandkids and, and, and the kids uh, together. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you said you watched uh, a lot of matches of Salzburg. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I watched the 20 games, both. Yeah, saw the league games as well. Yeah. We were quite impressed in the Netherlands about the Twente Salzburg uh, matches. Yeah, it was good, eh? Yeah. Uh, real. Text him after the game. It's really nice that um, everybody with a bit of a football eye can see his impact. It's massive because I think Salzburg, the Red Bull club stand for a specific way of football. Um, but that can get lost over years. It's completely normal stuff like that. But it's there again. It's just, uh, I love this nice mix of really in real intensity and, and a clear idea and possession and um, I saw that and I told him directly after um, that you can see this team has a good coach so and that's important that's how you how I judge coaches my whole life it's not I don't the most of them you don't know so you watch the games and you think oh who's the coach of that team they play really well so and that's Salzburg I know the coach and I see the football and it's not a long Spell yet that is there. The preseason, every coach this year had kind of a difficult preseason. Some a little bit less, some more because two big tournaments, three big tournaments, with the Olympics as well, Copa America, Euros. It's a it's a tricky was a tricky one. So and I'm I'm really happy. Yeah, with what I see. How would you describe uh, Pep Liners uh, as a person? Super guy, one of my favorite guys I ever met in my life. Um, Top, top, top coach, good friend, super loyal. Um, yeah, it was my inspiration for the last nine years. I learned so much of him. I'm pretty sure he learned a few things from me as well, but we, we just helped each other a lot and um, just like him. Um, and uh, we were really yeah, quite successful together and um, I always understood it in the right way. He could grow next to me maybe a few years he needed that uh, maybe I'm not sure the last two years he needed it still but he, that's what because we were both really loyal to each other so we just said come on let's do that and when i said that's it for me now i knew it's time for him as well to to do it by himself and um, so that's why i'm really happy about what i'm seeing Vito Matos, the same, yeah. uh, like it's, it's even younger, which is crazy. Uh, but these boys nowadays, they start really early. I think Pep's coaching career is as long as mine. He just started <laughs> when he was 17. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. He said to us, uh, mo most of the time, I learned from Jurgen almost every day. I wrote down a paper full with, with tips, with advices, uh, with things I picked up from him. Uh, who learn more from each other, you from him or he from you? Because you said that you learn a lot of, from him as well. I think he from you probably. 
So I don't know. I didn't write things down, but that's. Uh, I think in the beginning he wrote even things down when I, in meetings. <laughs> I, I just sometimes I saw it. Um, it's completely normal because he's younger than me. So it's not. I I I, I learned other things than he might have learned from me. I, I he opened my uh, my mind again um, for different things in football, but much more important as a manager. Obviously, we all get older. Um, the distance between you yourself and the age group of the players gets bigger. Well, because I have two sons, so that always kept me a bit in line with the, with, the, yeah, with the generation. But of course, then the next generation of coaches is out there already. The next world class coaches are already out there. So that's how it is. I, I know that. I'm, I'm not dumb. And, that's, and um, so, what in which part the game has to change is the question. So, they didn't, you might ask, and I tell you this or that. But if I'm right, we will see in the future. But there's always change, there's always development, there's always improvement. And, and Pep, Open my eye for, for, for these kind of things. So we, we put, I said once, um, I got a Dutch coach, which obviously is a possession. Dutch football is possession based football, it's Cruyff, it's all these kind of things, it's great football. Uh, and I turned him into a counter pressing monster. <laughs> so we both gave each other just impact. It's, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it so much. It, yeah. I enjoyed it so much. Um, because I love his excitement, I love his desire, I love all these kind of things, and he can he, he really gets out, goes out of the saddle eh, when he talks about football. So it's re not only with you or whoever you spoke to, uh, but with me as well. He doesn't stop talking. Oh my God, he's really like oh. Pfft. We had an interview of one and a half hours. Yeah, can he, you? He oh didn't yeah, stop. and that's I know, I know, <laughs> and, and that's great. I love that excitement. He always reminded me a little bit on my younger self, and not that I found myself that great that time. No, but it was. Wow, was I really like that? Yeah, probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he so, will get calmer as well. But yeah, yeah, he probably will. Trust me. Uh, yeah. With coming of age. Uh, <laughs> um, so he's he's not really Dutch anymore because he's a counter pressing monster now. Yeah, no, he's at the, the, the next level, uh, next level of a Dutch manager. No, it's it's all good. Yeah, don't it's worry. All, it's a, no, no, no. Uh, you remember the first time you met him? Yeah, yeah. He was already there, of course. Yeah, exactly. So I signed for Liverpool um, and I had my two coaches, so Jacko um, um, and Pete. And Mike Gordon told me I would like you to, to, to take the, to keep the um, one coach and a goalie coach. So goalie coach good because I don't have a goalie coach. And um, then I asked, what is, what is the other guy, what, is it, what kind of guy is it? Yeah, he's the development coach. He's the, the connector between youth and, oh great, I never had that. Love the, love the idea. Germany, nobody pays for a coach like that. Mm -hmm. You want a second assistant for what? So, and what are you doing then? It's more the question in Germany. So I like the idea a lot. And then we had the first night, uh, I think a lot of media things to do. And then the first night we met in the Hope Street Hotel. I sat next to John Achterberg, I remember that. Um, and I think the next one was Pep. And that's when, when we met the first time. And um, from my side, um, it was more or less love on first sight because I saw his his passion for football, it was his, um, um, his, his, his excitement about everything. And, I, you know, when I think about Jurgen Klopp, I don't see myself as an exceptional coach or whatever. I don't think that way. But I know that some other people do that and you could see it in Pep's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, my God, that's you, go. somebody big. You, better, you better listen <laughs> in his mind. Um, and... Yeah, and that's how it started. And from that moment on, did it change during during the years, or did he keep looking at you? No, no, way? no, it <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we he, him, on the, on the, we were like this. Maybe in the beginning it was a bit yeah. like that. In the end, we were really um, equal partners. Yeah, there was a period he left you. He, he went spread already spread his wings in, in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did it influence him? I don't think I'm, I'm not sure if I believe that you have to fail once to to, or to get really in trouble to make the next step. But we all know it's a famous saying: you can learn more from defeats than from constant uh, victory, stuff like that. I, I, I'm not sure it was a, it was a it was a real defeat, but it was. It wasn't well prepared. I can think we can say that. I don't know exactly about how Pepsi. We didn't speak a lot about it. No, no, no. It was not necessary, really. I was overly happy that he came back, um, so I didn't want to ask what went wrong. Um, but it was an experience, definitely. But you better ask him what, how it was there exactly, probably you did it. Um, but I think it was not well prepared. It was a bit in a rush. There was an opportunity. Let's do it. Um, and I like his confidence. 
that it's really important in our in our job that you that you are convinced about the stuff you're doing and that means you think pretty much ah, I can sort this <laughs> I can do this you need some but, confidence yeah absolutely but actually to sort things probably you need to know more about the situation I'm not sure he had all the information at that time and now he has definitely it's a completely yeah. different thing he I, I, I think with Salzburg, the thing is a, is a real win-win situation. It's so smart from him, but it's so smart from Salzburg. So that you, so if, if, you, if Pep would describe himself, he would say, I love football. I love my family. Bam. Number one, I love football. And then I think pretty sure young players, his, his desire to develop these boys is crazy. It's almost uh, the perfect he came, club. He came into my office. I, I think I could write a book about the moment when he told me first time about Trent Alexander-Arnold. I mean, it's enough what he said for a book already. Uh, he yeah. described the boy. Um, and so, and now you have and find a club. It's a chance to play Europe, uh, European football. has a chance to play Champions League. Age group, I don't know, between 17 and 24. They have everything now, a little bit of older goalie. But all these kind of things. Salzburg wants a coach. Wants to, they want to do the traditional Salzburg things like against the ball, blah, 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 good organization. But with getting better, you need to have a better idea in possession. Pep has that, obviously. Yeah. We proved that over the years. And um, so it's so smart. And, and I, I, really, I really like that, that, um, that, that he did it and they, that they went for it. But he had a lot of options. Uh, I know I was pretty much, we, we, we trust each other a lot. So he asked me about everything. What would you do here? I spoke to them, stuff like this. We have meanwhile the same agent. As well, so I was I was in loop. Let me say it like that. And um, fun process to watch, probably. Sorry. Fun process to to witness for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On one side, I knew for me it's it, that's it, and then on the other side, for him it starts. It's really nice. It um, and that's why I said I, I we text a lot, um, and I don't want to bother him or whatever. It's not really, but if he writes, I, I answer, <laughs> and I watch the and I watch the games. Yeah. I watch the games. Yeah. Um, he said, uh, "Do you remember four four months later after he, he went to the Netherlands? You already called him. Yeah, yeah. You remember what you said? No. What I what I said or what he said? To him. What did I say? I wanted him back. Yeah, you wanted him back, so you had to say something. Yeah, yeah I know. But I don't. But what did I say? Probably, um what do you think? <laughs> I have an idea. Uh, so that may, maybe something like that. Uh, it, it was quite a big sentence, actually. Yeah, okay, then tell me. I, I don't We're going to conquer the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised about that. Um, but uh, we, we had that idea a couple of times. <laughs> um, and actually, we did. You probably did. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, and, probably and, you did. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. No, no, it's, I, I knew um, that I definitely want him back. Um, so one of my, over the years, so I'm now long enough, I know myself long enough, let me say. So I would, my, my best strength is um, to, to identify people, good people, and to let them grow. I, I, that, I, I can do that. I don't know how, I couldn't really describe it, but I like watching it. Like people next to me really let them become the best version of themselves. My ego is no problem in that process. I have no problem with confidence. I have not too much. It's fine. I'm not a genius. I'm a worker. That's all. I know myself. But to have that, and I, I knew I want to see him. Hmm. I want to yeah. see him grow. It's, yeah. it's fun. He went to the garden to call to you and he came back and Pep's wife, oh, Pep's wife knew straight away, you're going to write. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. You can see that probably today still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, good. And you delivered. You conquered the world. Um, what's your most beautiful memory in all those years? It, can you can you even out say of, that? Out of how many? There were many. Oh, just purely game and football related is definitely the final whistle of the Champions League game. It may it might have been half a minute before, because. I think in the last 20 seconds I walked to Pochettino and I'm pretty sure before that I turned around to the coaches and just we look in each other's eyes and probably with Pep as well. It's uh, and other, that's it now. And that's great. We had fantastic moments in, in the coaching dressing rooms, um, sitting there looking in each other's eyes and just thinking, wow, how could that happen? So I would think the same if you look from outside. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. Sometimes you pictures. 
how is Pep Guardiola, what is he doing in a, in a coaching dressing room, stuff like this, when you see then afterwards a picture like an hour later with a cigar or whatever. <laughs> so it's like going already had a shower and these kind of things. So I, that's probably really interesting. But then I had these moments myself, obviously sitting there, and it's like in the lowest, lowest league, the same as a beer. In Mainz as you well. Look, uh, yeah, you look each other in each other's eyes. Mainz is not the lowest league before that. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You were in the, oh, good, you oh, were in the Zweite Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so um, it's it's all good. And it, it, these are the, the, the purest moments you can get. There's nothing to do with the outside world um, is watching or whatever. This is really pure private. And we had great moments there. He said to us, uh, I was glad for Jürgen because of some lost finals. I understand that. I was glad for myself, for myself as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you can you can see that it's um, look now already. When you when I look back and it's like I, I, I was part of four Champions League finals, that's quite an achievement. I can, a lot of people can say that. I, I, I always very sometimes in, in um, recent times I I tell people I I lost more Champions League finals than most people play. <laughs> that's both in uh, yeah. great and not so good, um, but it was very important that we. Won at, at least, least you won. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was very helpful. And the difference between winning it and just qualifying for it is, yeah, it's the biggest you can imagine. Yeah. Um, speaking about youth and speaking about Alexander Arnold, you just mentioned, he gave a present to Pep after after his uh, after the Champions League final or after his goodbye. Yeah. Um, he said, without you, this, this wouldn't have happened, he said to Pep. Yeah. With a beautiful picture of the both of them in uh, during the Champions League final of after, yeah, this, afterwards. Yeah, there's this picture where he's on his back. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's very likely. I, I, I mean, Pep had him before in the youth already. Um, and it, it is a bit like that. He's probably, Trent is right. Trent's mother was in my office because the first three, three contracts, I think she was, she was the agent. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's really a wonderful story and how it all um, developed over the years and these kind of things. But yes, you need the right people around. That's how it is. Everybody in life. Um, I don't know exactly. You look pretty young, so you came here. Somebody saw you, helped you, blah, blah, blah. Most of the work you did yourself. If it's Trent, the same. We opened the door, but Trent yeah. ran through it. That's how it is. It's um, His right foot is ridiculous. Rid Still. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I enjoy highlight videos sometimes more, sometimes less, but the Trent Alexander high, Arnold highlight video is insane because you don't need the goals. Yeah. It's just the passes. You just watch your pass and think, well, oh, it's that possible. Mm -hmm. I could pass the ball myself, but not, not like that. It's a completely different sport. So that's how it is. We give opportunities. Pep gave the opportunity. Pep was a big advocate, big supporter. That's true. It didn't re need to really to convince me. Um, I remember that Trent was a brilliant kid, but physically not ready. So we always had to take him off after 60 minutes, all fine. Um, but he developed in that department, obviously, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, um, this was uh, being given after the goodbye at Enfield, I think. Um, um, a lot of have been, has been said about you and you've been, we've, we saw you uh, during the goodbye at Enfield. How was Pep actually during that day? Because the cameras were on you, of course. But... No, no, we asked our pictures from us as yeah. well, because we, we, we were obviously waiting inside. Um, and Louis Dobson, uh, team manager, uh, at the day was there and telling us who goes when. Mm -hmm. And we were all, we were all touched. And in the end, only Pepper me, and then he goes on a nice day, and we all had tears in our eyes. There was no, there was no chance. We love this club. There's no. Uh, it's just part of it's part of life, part of the deal, stuff like that. Usually, and we know we knew we were blessed as well because usually you leave a club through the back door. <laughs> in our in our business, you come in through the front door and they push you out the back door. We were blessed and and could go through the front door as well. So that was really nice, um, and we really knew how special this is. And um, so in this moment, we gave each other uh, a massive hug. Um, yeah, and then we said goodbye to the people, and um, it's, it was a great day, actually. I was not sure how we will cope with that, but we did even that quite okay. So that was a really good day. Um, and I, I remember that night, Pep is not a real party lion, um, but that night, family liners, 
Really? Well, yeah, I saw them quite long on the dance floor. But they didn't speak about that, maybe. But uh, no. yeah, he's not really skilled. But Danielle had enjoyed it, his missus. So that's fine. Um, no, no, that's possible. We, we had, we just, <laughs> we wrote the book together, and that was the last chapter, and we enjoyed that as much, as much, because we knew it's not forever. That's just not life. It's not like that. You cannot. I could still be there, but I'm not, I was not. The, I'm not the same anymore. I'm. I'm. We all are. The energy, what we, we comes from the desire for something. So I mean, if you feel that he has a little bit of lack of energy not there, you don't should not force yourself into it. It's too important. Yeah. It's um, and that's why I'm completely in peace with it anyway. And I love watching. I'm texting with John Achterberg only yesterday. So we are we have the coaches group still, um, and the results uh, flying in from Salzburg and everybody. Bam, 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 go for it. He took two of them with him, Vito and, and Andreas Kornmeier. Um, so. It's just nice. And we speak now, it's a while ago that I spoke about it, really, when I speak about it, uh, this time and him and stuff like this. And it's such a good feeling. It's so nice that you have, it's just good, just positive. And um, that's the best you can say probably about nine years you spent together. Yeah, and a new book at Liverpool uh, is going to be written by another Dutchman and his staff. Um, during the goodbye, you, you were singing, by the way, my compliments, it, it was quite good. Um, my singing, thank you. Yeah. My voice. <laughs> <laughs> Was it completely spontaneous? And everything. Wow. Everything yeah. was spontaneous. Yeah. It pretty much most of the time was. Um, Arne. Yeah, yeah. Good coach, really good coach. I'm, I'm, I was really happy when I heard that Liverpool is going for a slot. So I was not involved in anything. It should not be like that. And I'm not this kind of guy in the background still having some strings and stuff like that. I don't want that. It, it, the club is too big, too good. The people are too good. A lot of things changed since we left. Um, but my the only concern for me was: will they get a good coach? That's a very that's a big part of the decision to say that early. Uh, because saying that early, and you, we all saw the market later on developing coaching market. I thought, oh my God, there's no one in the market anymore. Who will they want? They will want to sack the coach, but don't know the manager, but don't know who to take. And Liverpool was early, and Liverpool got a top, top, top solution in onslaught. I liked his football a lot. Um, he played it with, with Rotterdam, so that's really good. Saw now the Sevilla game, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the preseason friendly. At Anfield, yeah. Yes, big parts of it were really good. Um, and and no, the, the league game, the second half was obviously really good. But it's, just, it's not important that I like it, it's just you can see um, he's, a, he's a very good coach and team I, I know now better than most. Um, is a really good squad. It's a really good team. So um, that will be that will work out really well. Yeah. In front of me sits his biggest fan. You said. Sorry. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. From now on. From now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, it's true. I want him to do well. I want the club to do well. I want the players to do well. So, yeah. Yeah. I think I said supporter. It's a bit of a different thing to fan. Oh. Where I support. Okay. Uh, yeah. So like, I really want. I was all I have. To, I want them to do really well. Um, and that's exactly uh, what we tried to do in, the, in these nine years. We tried to build a foundation which other people don't have to change everything just to get it somehow in line again. And I think the foundation is good, but now new skills, new words, new d different approach to different things, you know that yourself. It will help to, can help some um, to, to flourish even more. Yeah, he said to... Uh... He said to Liverpool TV, I think, or, or other media, I said, uh, Jürgen left the club in a very good place. We did. I know uh, that. Are you pleased to hear that? I don't, I don't have to say that. I know it. It's, it's not that we... I, I did, it was not that I closed the door and <gasps> I got away with it. <laughs> so it was really... We knew that the, the team is, is a really good team. The problem in football is other clubs have good teams as well. <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. And especially the competitors you have in the Premier League. But no, no. That's all fine. Uh, and... And Arna called you as well, right? No, he doesn't call me. We we we, had, we spoke. We spoke one or two times, I think. We texted a few more times, um, but it has nothing. I can tell him what he would couldn't know himself right now. It's again just from my side, just to to to, to give kind of a positive feedback in the beginning because we are all human beings, mm -hmm. and you are, he worked his socks off. I know that because the tour is super is super intense. Uh, so an American tour in a year when you have Euros and and Copa, you don't have the team together. But they come, you have one week until the first match day and stuff like that. So 
I think he had similar situation, but exactly the same situation, definitely not. And I, I, when I saw the games, that's why I watched it, not to think, oh, how does it look? Um, the work he did was obvious. Yeah. I, the idea is obvious, and that's the best you can say about the coach. Yeah, and Pepin and Arnold knew each other already. They were talking yeah. a lot to each other. Yeah, yeah, I know. I so, know. So, yeah, true. Yeah. Um, and we we Dutchies, of course, are very proud that, that Arne is, is the coach of, of, of Liverpool. Erik ten Hag is the coach of, of Manchester United. Yeah. Um, do you think they're possession coaches or uh, gegenpressing uh, monsters, counterpressing monsters? <laughs> <laughs> Arne is pressing. Uh, he, he loves pressing. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I just don't. You, they are. You mean Eric? <laughs> no, no, nothing to say. It's really, they, they all have. I don't know what they are. They, they, you have to ask them. Yeah. Um, I like the football they play. I, I cannot. I didn't speak to players. I didn't ask them how is training, how is that. Not at all. How is that? I, I'm not this kind of guy. Um, I could read a little bit around. Social media, training super stuff like that, but I knew that before you would look Rotterdam. You cannot play like Rotterdam if the training is not good. There's no chance, yeah. um, and that's why I knew that will that will be fine. Everybody will be fine. So um, it's it's all good, and it, I'm sure he didn't even have time yet to kind of settle because he was just going for it. It's a lot of football in the beginning when you want to 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 bring your ideas into the players' minds. It's, it's a lot of work. And even if it's in some areas, maybe not that much a difference, it's still a difference. And the little, the little details make the difference. So it's a lot of work. Um, and he did that. And now after a bridge second half, he knows we can play really good. And if you don't play that good, then we struggle a little bit more, like against Ipswich in the first half. That's not news to him. That's not news to any football guy. Uh, but it's always important that you see the good stuff as well, so that's something he can pick up from. And yeah, I saw the goals. Nice goals. Nice goals, and it can be a roller coaster. The Premier League. <laughs> yeah, can be, <laughs> can can be. But he is now. I think it's now the first home game. Eh? What yeah. is that? Brentford. Brentford. Yeah. 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 First home game. He will enjoy that. That's uh, a special atmosphere. Yeah, you remember Pep forever. You remember Trent Alexander Arnold forever. All the boys you'll remember forever. Um, of course, the guy who you remember forever is Jordan Henderson. He lifted the trophy in uh, in 2019. He's now playing at Ajax. He's, he's become uh, become captain. You probably probably didn't surprise you. No, 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 no. Nothing surprised me. That's so all. It's uh, it's Hendo is for me uh, one of the most important players I ever I ever coached. He's a fantastic guy, super impressive leader, um, really top top player, um, and. Yeah, I hope he's doing well at Ajax. I don't think it's it's. I, I really don't think the Dutch league is extremely easy, and it's, it's or, or you you if you are at Ajax and you don't win, I don't think you guys hide your opinion. <laughs> to put it lightly, uh, we no. already had a discussion in Liverpool about yeah. it. You remember? I, I was know, there. I know. And we I talked know. about my colleague. I know. Yeah. 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 But it's just it's just like that. So it's like sometimes you think you have to remind people of, hey, it's just football, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget that. Um, but you so say I, it's very calm. You don't hide your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you don't. Um, I work together with Dutch people, so I know you don't hide it. Um, even Ted Lasso found that out. Uh, Ted Lasso. <laughs> that's such a funny situation. <laughs> it was not written by me. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm really happy. I hope he enjoys it um, and wish Ajax all the best. I always loved that club um, already as a kid. Yeah, no, as a kid, maybe I don't know. But when I, in my, in my, when I was a teen, teenager, then was, oh, Ajax was big, big, big. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like this. Always the colors were with me a little bit red, white. Um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. good. Um, of course, he was the captain together with uh, with Virgil van Dijk, or Vir Virgil was also a, a big captain of, <laughs> of your team. Yeah. Um, he, he was a bit doubting about his future after. I don't know if you experienced that. Now you probably are on holiday or, or playing padel or. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I have nothing to say about it. I know. Oh. It, I know it. I know it. And, no, but he's completely happy now. I, I assume, and he also is 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 going forward as the captain of of the national team, uh -huh. uh, without a doubt. I think um, because he's still he's still there some some years probably. Oh, I should. Unbelievable player, unbelievable player, unbelievable guy. So I miss them. 
I don't miss the job. I miss all the people and much yeah. the players. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely, that's true. Uh, that's really like that. But um, that's completely fine. We can we can see each other whenever we want in the future. So in a two weeks, I go. I have the the goodbye game or farewell game of Blasikovsky and Piszczek. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you see then the old players when they send me the list of who's coming. Oh my God, <laughs> that's really cool to meet them all again. And that's that's how it will be. But. All these boys in the future as well, but um, yeah, no, I I have no idea uh, what he what they will do, and that's all their own decision. They are really grown ups. They will do the right they don't stuff. They need advice. Now, no, no, no. They will do the right stuff, and um, and everything is fine. I know how much he loves Liverpool. Uh, I had Ginny, I had Ryan. Ryan plays now a new role. Look, it's like it's a new coach, new opportunity, these kind of things. I liked him a lot, um, Ryan, as a player, a little bit. Then he had a mini injury, then he had stuff like that, but he played top games for us. Now he plays a different position, really nice to see. Um, I loved Ginny over the years. It was my God. Uh, yeah, how's that? I had a lot of Dutch. Yeah. Uh, why? You, wow. I did a lot why, for why the relationship actually... between Germany and Holland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um, can tell you all both sides, they're right. Yeah. They're from Maybe you, you brought them together a bit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know you tell me. You tell me. I don't know if your influence is that big, but at least a tiny part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. From yeah. all different areas of Holland, by the way. Right? Yeah, from right. the south. Yeah. Uh, uh, really not near the border. Utrecht. Yeah. Yeah. Genie was from Rotterdam. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where, where's Virgil van Groningen? No, Breda. Yeah, ah. he played at Groningen, but ah, he, he was born in uh, in Breda in the south. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so maybe you should you should become head coach of the Netherlands one day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. You have enough good coaches there, Wahlberg in England. 